I feel like for the next stretch of time, I'm going to be starting a lot of videos with, man, 2023 was a whopper for games, but it really was. And with a great year for games comes a great year for bosses. And they didn't go easy on us. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 hardest bosses of 2023. So just a, a quick little disclaimer up front. We're talking bosses. There's going to be final bosses. There's going to be secret bosses. The criteria is that the game is from 2023. So that also means they're new bosses. So if you haven't played the game and you don't want to get spoiled, don't watch this video. So without any further ado, let's get moving with number 10, Craven the Hunter from Marvel Spider-Man 2. The bosses in the first Insomniac Spider-Man, they were kind of all pushovers. And that's basically what I expected in the sequel. Like, take any superhero game, the boss is usually pretty easy. They're meant for a wide audience, so the devs don't want to make them too challenging. At least, normally. I guess they didn't get the memo this time. Or maybe they did. Maybe the, the memo says something different than I thought. Because for whatever reason, the bosses in Spider-Man 2 ain't easy. Some of these fights are downright tough. I had more trouble with some of the guys in this game than in some games with reputations for being tough. Actually, it's kind of tough to pick who's the hardest, uh, but if I had to choose, it's probably Craven the Hunter. The entire first half of the game is just setting this guy up as the ultimate badass. So when you finally square off with him, it's like, all right, big man, let's see what you can do. You destroyed my city, took the lives of so many people. That was their fate. Just as this is ours. Mines? First time I fought him, he crushed me. Bloodbath. I just, I, I sat there with my mouth open like, that's the way it's going to be, huh? All right, Insomniac. Like, Craven is just relentless. He's got these close-range combos, these electric mines. He tries to snipe you from a distance. He loves attacking from smoke. Like, it's intense. And it only takes a few hits for him to take you down, even when you're playing on normal difficulty. He's even got two health bars, and it gets tougher in phase two. He keeps ringing the bell to stun you because you got the symbiote on. He's got these robot dogs he keeps summoning. It's overwhelming. Of course, in comparison to everything else on this list, he's not too difficult, but superhero games usually have pretty low standards for boss fights. They're rarely tough in the way that Spider-Man 2 is, and Craven's my pick for the hardest in that. And number nine is Annihilation from Remnant 2. The sequel to Remnant bills itself as Dark Souls with guns, and, well, it's accurate, especially in terms of challenge. There's a lot of pretty tough bosses in this game, but the toughest for me is gotta be the final boss, simply called Annihilation. You face off against this thing on an alternate version of Earth that's been completely taken over by the Root. The thing is, actually, I have no idea what this thing is, but it is a wild fight against a plant, dragon, man, hybrid that goes absolutely ham on you the moment you enter this arena. There is barely any room to breathe in this fight, let alone stop to heal when this thing is trying to smash you with a sword or a barrage of magic projectiles. The first form is dangerous, but it is nothing compared to form two, where it rips its own head open and a human figure emerges uh, from the cavity, I guess. I don't, I, that's, that's how I'm gonna describe this. The whole fight just goes off the rails and now you're suddenly in this digital world dodging sci-fi blocks. The arena gets more congested and confusing. You're just getting rained down with projectiles. It is disorienting as hell on top of the bosses already pretty difficult to avoid attacks. And to throw another wrinkle into things, the boss is also going to glitch between his two forms, mixing up attack patterns in even more unpredictable ways. If I didn't stumble into such an overpowered build for this fight, I probably would have been absolutely miserable. And number eight is Ibis Cell 240 from Armor Core 6. This fight's basically Armor Core's answer to Millennia from Elden Ring. It's a super aggressive feminine figure that has a red motif. Okay, maybe this is a bit of a stretch comparison. I don't know, but you get what I mean, right? It's a brutally hard fight, and that's really what matters. This thing is blazingly fast with highly damaging attacks that can easily overwhelm you when you least expect it. The thing about the toughest fights in Armored Core is that sometimes it really is down to luck. This game is very 
very fast, and at a certain point in human reaction time, it's just gonna fail you. You won't anticipate a missile barrage, or you miss a dodge by like a millisecond, and that's it, you're done. This thing's got all the staples of a hard boss. Got a ton of different attacks that it spams endlessly. It's got a few extremely powerful attacks that can happen at unpredictable times. It's got two forms. Of course, you gotta have two forms, right? And big surprise here, second form is more ridiculous than the first. Not exactly a new idea, but uh, notable nonetheless, this boss is tough. I mean, at least it does have relatively low stability, so if you do manage to damage it, it's not too hard to stun, but that's pretty much all you got going for you. Armor Core 6 is another game with just a lot of tough fights in it, but to me, this one kind of stands head and shoulders above the rest of them. One of those wake-up call boss fights that really forces you to learn and adapt. Every game with some novel controls or mechanics should have a boss like this just for that reason. And number seven is Darth Vader from Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I guess if they're gonna make a boss absurdly hard in this game, it's gonna be Darth Vader, right? There are a few things that make the surprise Darth Vader fight in Jedi Survivor a lot harder than anything else in the game. I mean, first, and the biggest problem is that you're not playing as Cal, you're playing as Sierra, who doesn't have as many stim packs as you'd have playing as Cal, and doesn't have the same moveset. It's similar, but the differences can throw you off, so you wouldn't think the game would throw a like super tough boss at you while you're playing as another character, but oh, they do. Part of the reason this is on the list is because I played the game on Grandmaster difficulty rather than the basic normal setting, but still, nothing else in this game even comes close to Darth Vader in the difficulty department. He is extremely powerful, he has long, sometimes difficult to predict attack strings, and because you're playing as a side character with less health, you're basically, uh, you know, required to perform perfectly, otherwise you're dead. No other fight in the game gave me trouble like this guy. It's presented like a simple little set piece battle, more cinematic than actual boss fight, but then he keeps kicking your ass. I was only able to get through this one through bullheadedness, pure force of will. Like, I refused to give up and lower the difficulty, and eventually I was able to beat him. And I, I wasn't satisfied. I had no joy of victory. I was just glad it was over. And number six is Raphael from Baldur's Gate 3, another game you could pick from half a dozen fights in Chapter 3, and they'd qualify on a hardest boss list. I, there's a ton of challenging encounters near the end of this game. Depending on your party and your knowledge of D&D, some of these fights can come off as damn near impossible. Raphael, he was that for me. Uh, the guy hounds you the whole game, offering power in exchange for your soul. He's such a smarmy asshole that you just well, you want to kick his ass. But when the opportunity finally arises, uh, oh yeah, I'm fighting a demon in his own domain. Uh, that That is hard, as it turns out. The odds are stacked against you. Raphael is at the center. There's six cambions around the arena. There's a dwarf, this other big demon over here. You might be able to talk 
Uh, they're going to helping you, but it's unlikely to work. On top of that, there's four soul pillars in the arena. Guess what Raphael could do with those? Uh, yeah, if you guessed, empower himself and restore his health, uh, you'd be correct. And you start off smack dab in the center of the arena, totally surrounded. Unless you're properly prepared, half your party will already be dead before you're given a chance to act. With all that help, you might think Raphael himself is fairly weak, but uh, no. He's got 666 health, T he, and an ascended form that makes him even harder. And guess what makes him transform? Yeah, destroying soul pillars. So basically, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Well, not really. Priority one kind of has to be destroying the pillars. Otherwise, Raphael's basically immortal, but pulling any of this off without dying is very hard. Getting to max level is the only thing that makes this fight possible, really. Along with the help of Hope, who provides some useful healing spells. Even with all the advantage, it's still a grueling, extremely difficult fight. At number five is Alien the Starved from Lords of the Fallen. The secret boss of Lords of the Fallen is brutal. Take the Pieta fight near the start of the game and make it about a hundred times worse. And you're getting close to how difficult this boss is. Just getting a chance to fight them at all is an absurd challenge. It, like it requires you to follow an extremely convoluted and hidden series of steps towards unlocking the umbral ending, part of which involves killing some extremely helpful NPCs, including the game's only blacksmith. What do you get for all those sacrifices? Oh, just the hardest boss boss in the game by a long shot, and to make matters worse, you can't upgrade your gear anymore. You killed the blacksmith, you jerk. You can't upgrade your healing items either, so uh, hope you're ready for this thing, because if you're not, you might as well turn the game off. The fight starts off reasonably enough. It's got most of the same attacks that Pieta had, but a uh, few new umbral tricks thrown in the mix, like uh, these eyeball turrets and extra projectiles. <laughs> It seems tough, but doable at first, and that's when the other shoe drops. It summons a shallow double of itself that's just as aggressive as the actual boss, and has a few new tricks, actually. Dual bosses are always the worst in the Souls games, and while this one isn't quite as miserable as some I've experienced, because they play at least a little fair by having one stay away and attack at a distance while the other's at close range, uh, that doesn't make the fight easy, per se, just possible. The only saving grace to this boss is if you do manage to take out the shadow, it'll stun the main boss for a little while so you can get some free hits in, but that's about the only forgiving thing about this fight, because it's not like the shadow is gone from now on, the boss summons a new one, and any damage done to it makes no difference against the actual boss. Killing this thing is an ordeal, and your reward for all that is to get eaten by a weird death god uh, to bring about the end of the world. Totally worth it, right? And number four is Eviterno, the last desecrator from Blasphemous 2. For the most part, Blasphemous 2 is actually a more forgiving game than its predecessor. The boss fights are not easy, but they're fair, and they give you a little wiggle room to screw up. This guy, who's the boss before the last, doesn't though. He's a huge jump in difficulty compared to anything else in the game, and that includes the actual last boss. There are not any gimmicks with this guy or tricks, he's just a really tough one-on-one -on -one fight with an enemy with a lot of attacks that do a ton of damage and need to be deflected properly if you want to survive. Like most night bosses, the thing that makes him challenging is his difficult to deflect combo strings, his unpredictable and varied attack patterns, and just a few straight up bullshit attacks that feel like they should be easy to avoid but aren't. He's got all that and more. He's also got two forms. The first part of the fight feels like a cakewalk. It's just time filler to get to the real battle. And then he gets out a sword and starts fighting up close and personal. Uh, just finding the time to heal is difficult. Like, I died just looking for an opening to heal up more than anything. This guy basically forces you to play perfectly or die. Well, actually, there are a few ways to cheese him, and eventually I gave up and did the old Legend of Zelda 2 trick, hiding in the corner. Somehow that worked. Wasn't an honorable win, but uh, he's not exactly playing fair either, so why should I? 
And number three is Colex from Super Mario RPG. I'm hearing you typing now. Right down in the comments, like, ah, Colex, seriously. Super Mario RPG is well known as an extremely easy RPG, and if anything, the remake makes it even easier. But behind a locked door in Monster Town, you can find this guy. He's a little joke Square slipped in about the 3D rendered graphics. Uh, yes, Square, the original developer of the game. Remember, Super Mario RPG was pre-rendered 3D. It had a Donkey Kong Country look to it. And Colex is a final fantasy boss who cross dimensions into the world of mario like he's even got the boss music from final fantasy 4 it's all re accurately recreated here in the remake of super mario rpg obviously the 3d graphics in this remake are more pronounced than donkey kong country style pre-rendered stuff so if anything it actually works a little better but uh I mean, Super Mario RPG was easy, and Colex isn't, isn't actually that tough, at least in the original Super Nintendo version. With the remake, they added a post-game where you can refight the six side bosses from the original, only they're significantly tougher. You beat them all, and you unlock the chance to fight Colex again, only now he's fully rendered in 3D and has gotten a huge power boost. The thing that makes this fight so much tougher happens right on turn one. He uses Meteor immediately, which is an attack that always does full damage to everybody in the party minus one. It doesn't just drop down everybody's HP to one, it does enough damage to leave everybody at one HP if they're at full health. So you can just heal, right? Well, here's the problem. He's got his four crystals, and those things attack whenever they want. If you're unlucky in the first turn, you can get a total party wipe in less than a minute if Colix decides to follow up Meteor with an unblockable attack that hits everybody. And he doesn't do it just once. He does it every five turns. The only way to possibly survive this is to get rid of the crystals ASAP. And even with that, the game's best items at max level still feels kind of like luck if you can beat them or not. And, and you know, taking them out, it's kind of just for bragging rights. There's no real reason to do it otherwise. So if you got nothing to prove, save yourself the pain. This is one of the hardest bosses ever in like one of the easiest RPGs ever. And number two is the nameless puppet from Lies of P. Uh, the bosses of Lies of P do not mess around. This is a Souls-like, and it's got some of the toughest Souls-like encounters I've ever faced. I've played a lot of these games, too. Some of these bosses really give Sakura a run for their money. Hard game, full stop. So it shouldn't come as any surprise that the final boss, being known as the nameless puppet, is extremely hard. It's a no gimmicks, no frills throwdown against an extremely difficult opponent that's very fast, does a ton of damage, has a huge variety of attacks, and requires extreme precision to counter. Basically, it's hard. And it has two forms. First part of the fight, no joke, but form two is just unfair. Now every hit does a ton of weapon damage, so you better either master blocking every single one, or, uh, you know, watch your weapon break and become worthless, forcing you to waste your time trying to repair it, which will probably get you killed. I don't want to say this thing is as tough as something like Sword Satan from Sekiro, but it's in a similar place in the super tough final boss rankings. You want to know the really sick thing, though? If you're going for the secret ending, the guy gets even harder, so, uh, good luck with that. And finally, at number one, Lubu from Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Most of the toughest bosses I've listed so far, optional secret bosses or final bosses, but not this guy. For some inexplicable reason, I, I will not understand. They did not put the toughest boss at the end of Wolong Fallen Dynasty, like, or even in the post game or, or something. It's right in the middle of the game and comes out of nowhere. Lubu is a character whose reputation precedes him. If you played any Dynasty Warriors game, you're conditioned to fear him, and he definitely lives up to that legacy in this game. Like Lies of P, pairings a central mechanic in Wo Long, and if you're going to survive against Lu Bu, you need to master it because he throws everything he can right in your damn face. Just learning the timing of some of his attacks, you can deflect him, takes time because of the slightly weird hitboxes on some of this stuff, and he has got a huge health bar. Yeah, but even hitting him at all to do damage can be difficult because he's always jumping around and getting on his horse to attack you from a distance, so there's a lot of frustrating downtime in this fight. Fatigue starts to 
is set in, and that's where mistakes are made. At least he's just a one-form battle. You don't fight his second form until much later in the game. And in a cruel twist, it's actually super easy. Why is the boss you fight halfway through the game about 100 times harder than the one you fight before the end? I don't know, that's just wool long for you. The game does what it wants. Don't try to make sense of it. <laughs> And I got a bonus here for you as well. Uh, Galdera the Fallen from Octopath Traveler 2. This uh, secret super boss from Octopath Traveler 2 is a doozy. Even as far as optional secret bosses go, this thing is ridiculous. Uh, only way you're even getting close to beating this thing is by taking advantage of just about every overpowered strategy and exploit the game has to offer. And even then, it can be tricky. The Octopath games are great, uh, but this second one in particular has some long as hell boss fights that don't make for a great video. So I'm just throwing this one in at the end. It's definitely got the look of the secret final boss. Definitely worth the acknowledgement. It's the kind of thing you want to see in a JRPG. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Rags.